Hello SanFam and welcome to the Wednesday Game Maker tutorial stream. I hope you're having a fabulous day or evening or night or whatever it is where you are in the world. Please let me know if my mic is okay today because I remember last time it was super quiet. Don't know how it is today. Um, I tried a different I tried different things to fix that, but hopefully it's fine. Uh, we are going to be doing a game maker tutorial today. Um, we are going to have a look at how to use animations in the game maker, how to chain them together, how to create like a little story or sequence that you can use to bring your games to life. Um, if we have time after that, we I will be playing some game jams. So if you have some game jams uh, that you want me to play, Steve Aoki game jams, do let me know. Maybe we'll get to it, maybe not. I can't promise anything. Depends how long it takes with the tutorial and if there are a lot of questions and stuff like that. Um, but we might and also want to say hello over on YouTube play games for fun was the first to message me Across all platforms. Hello to you and Sandman and Wicked You and Volts Machina and David Macon. Hello to everyone It's nice to see you guys. Uh, I hope you're having a good time. So I want to Any giveaway today there will be but not yet <laughs> There will be a giveaway a little later in the stream Hey everyone coming in now, it's good to see you. Um, let's let's pop into the game maker real quick. Let's see, there we go. Uh, let's pop into the game maker because we are going to make a little tutorial here. Actually, before we do that, I almost forgot. I wanted to quickly go over a couple of things. Um, we've got the land sale that the raffle closed just today. So if you have signed up for this raffle, please make sure that you check in tomorrow to see if you have won a whitelist spot so that you can actually mint your land so don't forget that um, that is tomorrow in one day and one hours and 21 minutes from now um, so so make sure you check in so that you can mint your land if you win a whitelist spot also we have currently a vox edit contest active um, steampunk, steampunk vox edit contest so if you guys want to uh, participate in that it just started yesterday the day before i think um, the, on the 5th of June, yes, the 5th of June, um, you need to submit your entry before the 18th of June at 11.59pm UTC. So if you want to join this, you can. There is both a beginner and a regular category. Um, and for the first time ever, there is also an equipment category. So if you create an equipment for this contest, you can enter a uh, special category, category, excuse me, um, where you can also win lovely sand prizes so do take part in this if this is something that interests you um and if you if you like sand because i like sand so you know why not <laughs> so that's what we've got this week and also let's get back into the game maker and let's get started on animations um so this was a tutorial that was requested to me in my previous stream so i send out a form with some suggestions which I did plan on doing again today, but um, I forgot to set up the form. Maybe I'll do it. Uh, for now, let's start by not doing that. Placing some assets. We are going to use an alpha dragon and we are going to want to make him take off, fly a little distance and then land. So that's just like a super simple little sequence. Um, you can of course do different things depending on what animations uh, you have available and what you're hoping to achieve. Um, you could really do some pretty elaborate um, like little story sequences if you wanted to uh, with animations specifically because we have gotten the new system where we can add more than one animation to a um, to a single asset. So if you look here we've got animated decoration behavior you say add animation down here, it's going to add another uh, animation that you can play in a sequence. Um, so that is a really, really useful tool that I have enjoyed playing around with. Um, hello, Bert Z, good to see you. This is something I've enjoyed playing around with because it's great for storytellers and uh, something that I am. I love creating games where there is a good story element. Um, so this is a really good tool for that. I'm sure you can use it for a ton of other things, not necessarily for story, um, but if you want to achieve something else that requires an asset to move in a certain way. Uh, game Maker Studio? What do you mean by Game Maker Studio? This is the Game Maker. Um, okay, so we're going to want to start 
the first animation with being take off. Uh, let's see, take off, there we go. That's just the first animation. We want the play count to be once. We want it to play once. We don't want it to loop. We just want it to play that once. I'm going to set the play condition to play and receive message so it doesn't start automatically. We're going to want it to just, let's just go with interact. So if we interact with the dragon, it's going to take off. And at the end of the animation, let's make it fly. Um, let's just say start fly. Okay, we've already got it there. Okay, so at the end of the takeoff animation, it's going to send a message start dot fly. So the next animation has to be flying. There are, diff no, there are a few more components that we need to add to this, but let's start with the animation. So the ne next animation has to be flying. This one needs to be looping because if it's not looping, it's going to just do a little flap with its wings and it's going to stop. So that's not going to be all that fantastic. Um, so let's make sure that it only starts once we uh, receive a message and that message has to be start fly. So once the takeoff animation ends, it sends the message start fly and that is received by this second element of the animation behavior and it's going to start flying. Um, because it's looping, as far as I know, it's not going to send an, a message at the end. So we're going to want to make it interruptible. So that means if another animation, which we're going to add now, if another animation is added and the message to start is triggered, uh, this interaction or this animation is going to be interrupted. So the flying animation will be interrupted when this one starts. And that's going to be land. Uh, where's land? Landing, landing, landing. There we go. Landing zero one. We again want it to be once. And we want it to be start land. There we go. And at the end, we're going to put start idle because if it if it just sort of ends the animation with landing, the animation is going to be over and it's going to just sort of freeze the asset. So it's just going to stand entirely still and it's going to be looking awkward. So we want to actually add a last animation to just have the dragon idle, just like it is by default. Um, it's not going to do that by default. So you have to add that in at the end so that it starts idling again. So we've already got idle zero one and we're going to want idle to um, to loop. We want it to continue idling after it's done flying. Um, we want it to start when we put start.idle. How's everyone doing, by the way? Are everyone doing okay out there? Are you having a good day in the sandbox? Are you doing some work in the sandbox today? Okay, message to start. Mm, Play.idle. Okay, that should be fine. Now, when the flying animation starts, it's not going to fly on its own. I mean, it's going to fly, but it'll stand still. So we're going to want it to actually fly somewhere. To achieve that, we are going to go ahead and grab a logic asset. Sunny day here, Volo says. Nice. It's sunny here too. It's been sunny for a really long time. It hasn't rained for a really long time and the grass is brown and dry. <laughs> and while I enjoy the sunny weather and not rain, I do think it might need to rain soon. Otherwise, the plants are going to die entirely. Okay, uh, we're going to want this one to be a basic platform. And I want it to be moving, let's just say five blocks forward, like in front of the dra dragon. And we don't want it to wait. If we put wait duration in, once it receives the message to start the platform, it is going to wait for uh, three seconds uh, before it actually starts moving. So that's what that three seconds was. Um, so I don't want that to happen because otherwise it's going to mess up my animations. I want it to start going straight away. I'm going to want it to fly with a speed of 0 0.5 blocks a second. Um, so base or we can just do like one block a second. So it's going to take it five seconds to go from 
this destination that it's at and five blocks ahead. So we need to remember to parent it. I'm going to uh, quickly do, I'm going to name them so we can quickly find them in the hierarchy. There we go. We're going to parent the dragon by dragging it onto the um, the logic behavior. So now the, the dragon is parented to the logic, which means when the logic component or the logic donut thing moves, the dragon is going to move with it. Hey, OG Shakespeare as well. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Um, okay, so we want this one to have toggle behavior because we don't want the platforms to start moving straight away because then it's going to start moving before the dragon takes off, off before we even start um, interacting with it. So we want the message to turn on to be start.fly. So it will only start moving once it flies. We're going to want to toggle off the initial behavior state to false. Um, this is because otherwise it's going to um, be off, uh, be on by default, so it'll move by default. Now it's off by default and it'll start moving when we get the trigger on message. We also want a trigger off message. That's going to be the land message. Um, so once it lands, we don't want it to continue moving anymore. Now we want to implement some kind of um, timer to it because we want the flying animation to last for exactly five seconds. This is not part of the behavior, so I can't say that this has to be five seconds. So let's make sure that we put in a timed event. Let's get a timed event in here and we're going to wait for message. We're going to wait. We are going to make it start at start.fly and we are going to say five seconds because that's the amount of time that it's going to take for the dragon to fly once it has taken five seconds it's going to send a message to land there we go that should work i think i got all the all the things all the things added i'm not entirely sure let's test it to make sure <laughs> because there are different there are a lot of different components going into this so let's make sure that i got it right and i didn't forget something we're going to go here we're going to interact with the dragon it's going to take off it's going to fly five blocks and it's going to land and then it's going to idle it worked success yeah, so that's how you add a chain of animations to make like a little, um, well, story maybe if that's what you want or some kind of, you can even make like little cutscenes with that. Um, one thing I do wish that we have to make cutscenes is that we had a behavior that would allow us to change camera uh, positions or lock the camera in one place so that we may force people to actually view things from a point of view while a cutscene is going on that would be really really nice um but let's let's hope for that to be there in the future um for now this is how you can do it um this dragon has an enormous collision um box which is kind of annoying I just kind of want to turn it off. Do all players in multiplayer see this or just those who do that mission? Um, because it's a multiplayer behavior, um, everyone should be seeing this. Um, so you can see as, as I said, or not as I said, but as I showed, this is multiplayer animation decoration. So that should be visible to every player in that ins instance. If you had chosen single player animation, that will only be visible to uh, that player locally. Uh, the reason I chose this to be multiplayer is because I wanted to include the platform. The platform does not exist in single player um, and multiplayer and single player components and behaviors don't communicate particularly well together. Um, so if you want to use back platform to, as part of this animation, um, you might have to go with the multiplayer. Hey, Elena honeys, how you doing? Um, and also, as I said, if we have some more time which i think we might have um i did want to play some uh game jams at the end of the stream so if any of you have some aoki game jams that you would like me to play 
you can go ahead and say which ones in chat otherwise i will select ones that i feel like playing can we use single player behaviors in multiplayer yes you can and actually i would recommend that you do for as much as possible so if you are creating a multiplayer game try to make as many components and behaviors single player as possible only where necessary use multiplayer behaviors and this is because multiplayer behaviors and components are actually a lot heavier on performance so if you don't need something to be multiplayer make it single player um, that pertains to askers to um, animations even is a good one to to keep in single player unless it is absolutely vital to your game that everyone can see these animations at the same time um, so that's a good one to keep in mind um, we don't have a lot of current documentation on performance but i can tell you this much that multiplayer behaviors and components are a lot heavier on performance than single player um, so it's a good thing to not use too many of them drinking coffee and trying to wake up well i've got coffee too so cheers to that not trying to wake up though it's it's uh, almost noon <laughs> i've been at work for a few hours um it must be morning for you or otherwise you're up late who knows you're welcome, Handgame Studios. Um, is is there any more questions or anyone else who has any sort of questions about animations or perhaps multiplayer and single player? Um, otherwise, I might think about moving on to to Game Jam. And maybe I am going to quickly go and grab a form for you before anything else. Hey, little legion, how you doing? Good to see you in the stream. So today's giveaway is Panda Pops's weapon crate. So weapon crate created by Panda Pops is up for grabs today. If you have won this weapon crate before, both in her stream or in my stream, um, please make sure you don't enter because you're not going to win it. Um, but if you don't have the weapon crate already, you can feel free to enter and you are in for a weapon crate NFT. Is it pop possible to attach a couple of quests to single assets? So what exactly do you mean uh, by a, a, attaching a couple of quests to a single asset? Do you mean like the message to send to start a quest? Let me grab a, an NPC for a second. Let, let's get this purple busy. Let's take off his health. Do an asker. Gonna go single player for that. One NPC gives three quests some more. Do you want those quests to start at the same time? Because if you had an asker and he said, how are you today? And you said, uh, you said I feel good and you put this message to be um, three quests start there. I spelled that wrong, but anyways, let's just say that that was the message that you're sending if you if you reply that to the asker. And then you ask, uh, you add three, three quests here that have that message to start. Let's see. Do it there and then one more there we go that should work um i haven't actually tried that before but I'm, I'm i'm assuming it should work i don't see why it shouldn't um okay so my first one is starting yeah there we go so we talked to this guy um asker and he sent out a message three quest start and it starts all the quests. So basically all you need to do is just make sure that all those three quests have the same um, message to launch. So under launch quest requires message, you need to uh, target um, requires message and you need to just put the message that the NPC is sending out for all three quests. In that case, if you want like 
um, the exclamation marks, the, the quest indicators. You can you can put an indicator on him. You can say he's a, a quest giver for... You really just need to select one of the quests because the exclamation mark is not going to show anyone whether it's one or the other quest. Um, but this should this should give you like a little exclamation mark on top saying that this guy has quests available. And in a minute I will join a coffee club. Who's joining a coffee club? Why are you joining a coffee club? Games for games for fun. <laughs> Or do you mean that you will join me and whoever it was who was drinking coffee in a coffee job uh, in a coffee club in which case you're very welcome you're very welcome to join the coffee club okay is there any more questions about the game maker before we jump on over to the game jams Share link for what, Ross Guru? Um, I'm going to share the link for the um, giveaway form for the weapon crate. I don't know if that's the one you wanted a link for, but if it is, there it is. If it's something else, let me know what it is that you want a link for. You mean you make coffee and enjoy drinking with you? You're very welcome to do that. I mean, coffee is great, so why not? Let's all enjoy it together. <laughs> We can pretend like we're in a virtual cafe enjoying a cup of coffee together. Isn't that nice? Um, okay. And Little Legion, since you're here, I did a few experiments with the boat behavior and animation, not animations, visual uh, effects, because I saw your awesome um, little video snip of that and I thought it looked really cool. I haven't been able to really achieve something that is as pretty as what you did. But, you know, I've, I've, I've looked around at it and tried to figure out how to, to make it look nice. Um, but yeah, that was a really, that was a really good idea. I've nev I never really thought about putting a, a bird and visual effects together. But it's a really great way to, to make the effects come alive in a different way. Good morning, Mac Vendelli. Okay, I think we don't have that many, that many, um questions about the game maker so I think I want to head on over and do a game jam playthrough instead. I really wanted to play a little bit more of The Floor's Cake. An Aoki game jam by Touche Studios um, which was fun. I've only played it a little bit. Um, because I haven't gone through the judging for it, but I have done it to verify that it was a valid entry and it looked fun. So I wanted to play it a little bit more and also I need to finish up my voting today. So might as well do that, then, I'm, then, I'm, uh, th then I've got the playthrough and I can do my votes on it. Yeah, it is nice. It's really, it's really calming to look at, just like you said. <laughs> Is it possible to test multiplayer features before publishing on Game Maker? Maybe with my own teammates. Um, there is a multiplayer simulator um, that you can use. It's kind of in the top right corner now. I'm not in the editor anymore. Um, but I will say that the multiplayer simulator does not always work exactly like a published game in multiplayer will work so you will probably have to test it by uploading it to the uh, draft gallery and text testing it there with your friends um, you will not be able to test it with friends in the editor so you have to upload it to the draft gallery for that if you are worried about people seeing your game um, and copying it or whatever you might be worried about you know sharing something that you've done um, you could always try to, you know, make your camera point away from your main game, point it at something that looks boring and simple, maybe just pointing at the sky or something like that uh, before you uh, press share, because that then that is the screenshot or the thumbnail that your game will have and just call it something like test. Uh, if you do that, 
people are most likely not going to enter that and look at it. Um, so yeah. Touche Studio and Work Zombies games are so cool. Yeah, they make really good games. Um, Work Zombie also won third, th was it third place? Yeah, third place in the previous game jam. Okay, so we've got James here, who's going to tell us a little bit about how to play. How do you play the different games? Oh, he's got like, yeah, uh, this is really nice. He's got this little sort of um, illustration of how to do things. So to start a level, approach a candle with a red or green flame. Candles with a green flame mean that they have been unlocked but not completed. A flame will turn red once that once that level has been completed. A blue flame means that you can't you can't interact with it currently. Play games for fun is saying exclamation mark question mark and circle above items to collect shows up automatically. Um, I'm assuming you mean the quest indicators. If you put an indicator component on an, an asset and you link it to a quest, so if you link it by adding giver to the quest, you can you can look at the indicator component. It'll have like a little sheet where it says you can add the giver of the quest. So you need to link the correct quest ID and make it the giver. That will give you an exclamation mark. If you make it the receiver of the quest, once the quest is complete, once you have completed the quest, that question mark is going to appear over that asset that has the giver or the receiver um, indicator. If you want something to have the little icon, the quest icon above it, you need to add an indicator and make it an, an objective of the quest. Um, then it'll show those little indicator symbols when you're doing the quest. All right. So, once a level has been selected, you must approach the center of the stage to start the level. You cannot select another level un until you have attempted the current one. Once the level has started, you cannot leave the stage until it ends. Alright. To beat the level, you must walk over the target amount of blue tiles within the time limit whilst avoiding the red tiles. If you touch a red tile, the level will end. Green tiles will never move and act as a safe spot on the stage. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. I like this little telescope. That looks super cute. Ooh, look at that. Oh, that's nice. So when you press E on the telescope, it's going to give you like a little um, vignette kind of thing. That's cool. That's really cool. Fun little detail. Doesn't do anything other than that, but that's pretty cool. Okay, let's talk to Touche. Yo, I see you've come to dance. Reckon you can beat all 20 levels of the floor's cake? Sure I can. Of course I can. I'm epic at gaming. Okay. So I need to interact with the candles. This one is green, which means I can interact with it. Ready for stage level one. Points to win 10. Time limit 60 seconds. Okay. Uh, let's start that one. Let's go to the center stage. And let's rock and roll. Okay, need to collect the blue tiles and not step on the red ones. Okay, so this stage is pretty easy, but that's probably because it's the first one. I kind of like the effect of the um, little glitter around the edge of the center stage to make like a boundary. Pretty cool. Let's start level two. Oopsies. I also saw that there was some level code there. I'm not entirely sure what that's about. Have a look at that a little later. Oops, it goes the other way. Okay. Okay, stage two done. I'm assuming that it's going to start getting more difficult as we progress through the 20 levels, um, which is pretty cool. I can see this being pretty addictive to sort of try to beat it. If if the challenge becomes good enough, like if it if the challenge really is there once you go up the uh, up some levels, um, they need to balance that well so that it's actually fun to progress. There we go. Stage three complete.
Okay, so level code for this one is 1311. I wonder what that's about. That's probably something. Maybe something over here. No, that's only three numbers. Okay, you can input numbers over there. Maybe that's what it is. Not entirely sure. I guess we'll see in a little while. Run over 10 blue tiles for this one. Okay. Uh-oh. It's already become faster. Did I? Oh, I touched the red one. <gasps> oh no. I messed up. Does it start again automatically? Can I start it automatically? No. I need to activate it again. If you do have Game Maker related questions while I'm playing, I can still take questions. Oh no, I messed up again. <laughs> I can still take questions um, while I'm playing this. Which one were we doing? Were we doing stage four? Oh, four, five. Okay. Need to focus on what I'm doing. I didn't focus. This one moves fast. Okay. Oh no, I touched it again. I didn't even... It didn't even feel like I touched it. Okay. I'm already failing at stage four. <laughs> Imagine what it's going to be like in like five levels from now and then at level 20. Oh my god. I apparently suck at this. How surprising. I should try to be more patient. But I'm not a patient person. Not with games, anyway. Okay, last one. Last one. I can do it. I can do this one. There we go. Stage 5 incoming! My nose is super itchy. So annoying. So all that summertime stuff getting into my nose. Okay, this one is moving like... Oops. Did I touch it? I didn't. Okay. I thought I did, but I didn't. We're good. We're good. False alarm. Okay. Five was easier than four, in my, in my humble opinion. Hey, Xura! Nice to see you. Nice to see your face. Well, not really your face, but your name. Okay, uh-oh. <laughs> I did a roll. I did not mean to roll. This happens to me too much. Red showing up in a pattern. Yes, it is going in a pattern and you can predict where it's going to go. I'm trying to, you know, make sure that I do that. I think if it was random, it would have been too difficult. Uh oh, it would have been too difficult because then you would never know where you could go. Excuse me, messed up again. Hey, Garnican, good to see you. When new game jam. <laughs> I'm already looking forward to the next game jam. Game jams is what takes up the most time from out of uh, for my work, but it's also one of the most enjoyable things. Like I get to get play everyone's games. How lucky am I? And you guys create some fantastic games, honestly. Many of them are better than some of the uh, the games that you see in the map. So, game jams are just great. 
This is why I love game jams. Did I game over? No, I didn't. Uh oh, am I running out of time? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh oh. Oh no. Ah oh, no. Okay, let's see what the other people are saying before I continue. What's this one? Challenge mode. Ready for challenge mode? What's challenge mode? Score as many points as you can with no time limit. Ah, okay. So basically you're gonna you're gonna step into the center stage and just continue doing that until you die. Cool. I'm not gonna do that right now. Maybe if I complete all, all 20, I will do the challenge mode. This one. To use the cake machine, because it's Steve Aoki, so cake. Everyone makes cake games for Steve Aoki. <laughs> to use the cake machine, input the number you want, then pull the lever at the end. It's that e easy. Here's a code you can try to change the sky. If you don't like that sky color, you can change it back with 2562. Mm. But what happens? What happens when you input the um, the number? Let's try one of the numbers from one of the candles. It's interesting that many game jams are more than season games. I think because uh, we have some extremely talented creators and also for game jams, we have a little bit more creative freedom, I think, than published games. Um, so for published games, there are a really, really, really big range of uh, requirements you need to be aware of. It needs to be well optimized. It needs to follow certain rules. So there are a few more restrictions. Um, some of the mechanics I think seen in game jams are sometimes perhaps a little too experimental um, because they might not actually work on the map. Um, maybe they will break in a, in a future update really easily because the mechanics are, you know, maybe a little exploitative. Um, okay, so this 262617. Two, I'm really bad at remembering numbers. 2617. Two, six, one, seven. That's one, six. Come on, change. Three, four, five, six. One and seven. But yeah, I think it's because we've got some really talented creators who are really good at making interesting mechanics. Um, and a lot of the games, especially sandbox games and partner games, are usually not as experimental in the way that they try to use the game maker in new and unique ways. Okay, try to code. What happens then? Okay, so this is not where you've got to put in the number. Oh, I did not put seven, I put six. Does this work then? Level six unlocked. Oh, okay. So... Does this mean that if I was to quit right now, if I was to quit the game, technically, if I came back, I would have to do stage one, two, three, four, five. But if I don't want to do that, I could write down the code of the level that I've reached. And then when I start again, I can come back here and I can put in the, the code for the level and I can start there. I assume that that's what that's for. That's actually pretty, that's pretty clever. Literally my favorite game of the game jam so far. Hey Panda, <laughs> good to see you. Yes, me too, actually. I think this is a really, really, it's a fun game. There are actually a couple of really, or not a couple, there are a few really good ex um, entries to the Steve Aoki game jam, um, but this one is quite fun. Really enjoying it. Okay, let's do, let's do stage six again. <clears throat> A password system like old games yeah I mean it works now that we don't have a save system right now um, it makes sense to do something like this I think they've um, successfully uh oh they've successfully managed to do it in a way where you know you can just come back and do um, uh, and start from where you had reached before which I think is pretty good 
Beelzebub says his favorite will always be Dracula's castle. You know what? I really liked that one too. Um, there was a lot of, I don't know if I should say controversy um, when it first came out because it was long and people didn't have the time to play it. Um, they were stuck in there for like a really long time and um, you can't save. So, so that was kind of a problem for people um, and they didn't like it. There was also some bugs that kind of if the game broke and you had to restart, it was a long way to do so. Um, you had to wait, uh, you need to like play through an entire long game to, to fix that and try again. Um, but it was a really good game, is what I was trying to say, that actually Dracula's Castle is also one of my favorites. Um, I think they made a really atmospheric game, they made a nice story, and they just did overall a really good job with that game. I really liked it. Uh oh. Ah oh, no. Panda would have liked Dracula's castle better, better if it wasn't so easy to skip tons of sections and play it for play test it for 12 hours. I can imagine that playtesting it for 12 hours might um, get you a little bit sick of the game. <laughs> I think I would have probably been a little bit sick of the game myself. A lot of great mechanics. Yes, it was. Um, and it was the old game maker. And they still did a lot of really good, um, good things. I've become so accustomed to Game Maker 0 0.8 now, and the things that you can do with it. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> oh no, I'm not really good at reading this pattern. getting myself stuck on stage six out of 20 <laughs> oopsie doopsies oh I should probably get a giveaway winner soon because the stream is actually soon over I should really concentrate because I just immediately drummed on a red tile let's do the giveaway thing I'm going to close up that form boop let's do that one Give me just a moment to get that sorted. So something weird is really happening with the with the form right now. Panda, if you're still in chat, I made a sheet of the responses, but none of the entries are showing up on the Google Sheet. That has literally never happened to me, and I have no idea what's going on. Have you ever encountered that? That is so weird. Huh? <laughs> okay. Um, like I've tried opening these responses like three times, making a sheet out of the responses three times. It just doesn't. It doesn't do it. It doesn't actually record the responses. What is going on? Yeah, I used to. I used the usual um, 
the forms that we usually use. I mean, I've just copied the form. I, I've, I'm, I've done exactly like I do when we do our streams. I've done what I've always done and it has never, ever not worked. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on right now. And the winner is me. Uh, yeah, no, Bert, it's not you. It's not anyone right now. Same thing happening to you? Strange. Okay. I mean, I guess I could... I could copy all these names, like, manually. <laughs> That's going to be a lot of work. Okay, all right. You just stream all wait time now. Thank you, Panda. That was um, that's a lifesaver because that this is really weird. Okay. Uh, one moment. That was not what I wanted to do. Good thing Panda was here. Now that this has to happen for some odd reason. Okay, let's do stage six again then. Otherwise, I'm thinking after this stage six, I want to quickly. Oh no, did I mess up? I wanted to quickly go through the um, animation thing that we did again to watch the end in case someone was not here at the start of the. Um, oh, I did it! I did it at the start of the stream. If if they weren't here, we'll just quickly go through what we did with the animations again. And I just said I would do that, and then I didn't. Um, let's go and do that experience. Did I save what I had set up though? I don't think I did. If I didn't, it's okay. All good. Okay, so what we were doing at the start of the stream, if you weren't there, we were working on animations and making change of animations. So I did not actually saved did i i did save some of it but not all of it okay um so basically we've got a chain of animations we've got takeoff when takeoff is done it's going to send a message for the dragon to fly um let's see start fly there we go and we are then going to add a flying animation. We're going to add an infinite loop because otherwise it's going to flap its wings once and then it's going to stop. Um, we are going to want it to start flying once it receives the start.fly animation. Um, we are not going to add any start or end message to this one because it's going to be looping and it's going to continue flying. We're going to make it interruptible because we do want to be able to stop it from flying. Um, and then we're going to pick the landing animation as the land last animation. We're going to make it play once. It's not going to loop, it just has to do it once. Um, we want to ma make this one play when we get the message start.land. At the end, we're going to make it start.idle so that it idles um, at the end and doesn't just stand still entirely frozen in time. Um, play count, count once, no, infinite loop, sorry. Um, play once you get start.idle, there you go, then we added a basic platform. Wait, did I add, oh, this is single player, oopsies, um, animated decoration, there we go. So let's just add the messages in again, fly, there we go, fly. Oh no, it didn't add the other animations. Oh, that's annoying. That's really annoying. Okay. So, land. There we go. Land. Idle. Uh, 
Infinite loop. Okay. This should be all the things. Let's just go through it real, uh, real quick. It takes off when you interact with it. Play count is one. Message at the end is start to fly. Then we've got flying animation. Um, it needs to be looping. It needs to play when it receives start.fly. It's interruptible and it'll be interrupted when we get start.land. That'll play once and then it'll send a message start.idle, which will start the idle animation. Okay, there we go. Now we need a basic platform. Basic platform. It's going to move five blocks forward and it's going to take. Um, it's going to go one block per second, so it's going to move. Um, it's going to take five seconds to travel five blocks. Going to name this one fly, so I can find it in hierarchy. Going to name this one fly as well, so I can find it in hierarchy. There we go. We're going to drag the dragon onto the logic, so that it is parented to the logic and it'll move with the platform. Then we are going to add, oops, I forgot to add something to the platform. We need a toggle behavior. We need it to be toggled off by default. We're going to need to add start.fly as the trigger on message and start.landing or land to trigger it off or toggle it off. And then we want to add a timed behavior. Um, what did I do there? Okay, timed behavior or timed event. Wait for message. Start.fly. Um, we want it to take five seconds before it sends a message to start.land. So basically, uh, what's going to happen now is we've got a dragon who has a takeoff animation that'll start once we interact with it. And once the takeoff animation has finished animating, it's going to send a message start.fly. That one's going to be received by the second animation on the asset, which is flying. And it is going to enter the flying animation and it's going to loop that animation until it is interrupted, which it will be once it receives the start.land message, which will start the landing animation. Um, which will play once and then it'll send a message to start.idle which will start the idle animation and then it will continue to idle. Um, also, once the start.fly animation is triggered, it's going to uh, trigger this basic platform which is going to be toggled on. It's going to travel five blocks which is going to take it five seconds. So this time to behavior right here is also going to um, be triggered once we get the message start.fly. It's going to take five seconds before it sends the message to start.land, which will interrupt the flying animation and start the landing animation. So that is how we learned to do a chain of animations today. Let's just go and test it out, make sure I did it all right again. And then I don't know if Panda is about finished ish with the with the manual form work. <laughs> Look at that, the dragon is flying, it took off, it flew, and it landed, and it idled. There we go. So if you want to create cutscenes, if you want to create little story elements and things that, um, that require an asset to do several animations, you can use these behaviors. Do remember that um, if you want to include a platform, you will need the multiplayer platform because we don't have a single player one. But if you are creating multiplayer games, do try to use as many single player mechanics or behaviors and components as you can. If something does not need to be multiplayer, make it single player because multiplayer behaviors are way heavier on performance than single player. So to optimize your game the best possible, make sure your behaviors and components are single player unless they have to be multiplayer, such as basic platform. If you have to have an animation show to everyone, you do the animation decoration as multiplayer. If it is not vital that everyone can see the animation at the same time, you just do it single player. Just remember that if you were to put, um, if you were to put like a, 
let's let's take this purple wizzy dude here. Um, if you were going to make him an animated decoration in single player, and you just make him like uh, I don't know appreciate, and he's going to play on start, he's going to uh, do an infinite loop, and it's single player. Um, sure, it's going to be local that people are going to see him animating, um, but even then everyone will see him because even even though it's local everyone will see him animating because he'll play on start so it's not like they need to trigger a message or anything um it might not be animating synchronized so it might be a different point in the animation for someone than it is for someone else but most of the time that's not really that big of an issue so just so you know that you know in order to optimize your games as best as possible, try to use single player behaviors and animations. Panda, have you managed to write down the, the wallets and the uh, the usernames of the people who submitted to the form? I can see you've done a few already at least. If there's anything else that anyone wants to ask about creating um, games in a game maker, do let me know um, here towards the end of the stream. We are going to finish up in just a moment when Panda has finished adding um, everyone to the form. That was super weird. Like I have never seen that happen before. Oh, this is why I can't see anyone. Ah, this is why I can't see anyone talking. I was like, no one is talking. Um, but that's because I had scrolled up in chat and I was like, no one's asking and uh, no one's saying anything. Okay, so we got the winner announced already. You said that twice and I did not see it. Cool, that's fine. <laughs> Congratulations whoever was announced. <laughs> Congratulations to whoever the winner was because I didn't see. Oh, I said Vox Machina. Hey, Vox, congratulations. Panna is going to have to be wondering, like, what are you keeping on talking to me, asking me whether I'm done, like, three times, and I answer you, yes, we already have a winner. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyways, we are finished for this stream. We have um, gone through how to make chain animations, how to chain them together. We have done a little bit of um, Game Jam playthrough, Touche Studios, Floyd's Cake. And we got our winner of the, sa uh, not the sandbox NFT, the weapon crate NFT, Vox Machina, congratulations. And I hope you guys are going to have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, night, morning, whatever it is. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.